All right, hi guys. My name is Brett Grossman. I'm a top leader here with Freedom Financial Solutions. And today I'd like to walk you through a very simple way that you can log into your LSW or National Life Group back office and do an IUL illustration. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen here. All right. All right, so when you log into your National Life Group back office, one of the first things you're gonna do is you can take a look here and go to training. Under training is a tab for product, life, or annuity. If you click life and then click universal life or hover your, your mouse over it, it'll give you, we typically use Flex Life 2. So if you clicked on Flex Life 2, Universal Life, there is product at a glance, product overview, kind of explains to you a little bit about the product, what it does, who a good prospect would be, some sales and marketing materials, forms and riders, things of that nature. Now I'm gonna come back over to the training tab Again, I'm gonna click life. And again, I'm gonna hover over universal life. I'm just gonna go over indexing, just so you can kind of see this. I actually did a couple videos here for you guys. This first video here explains in the indexed universal life insurance, uh, how it works, uh, how it's permanent life insurance, it has a fixed death benefit, it's, uh, uh, premium payments that can be made in different ways. And, and I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through that, but the different structuring, things of that nature. If you come over here, this is a different video that they've done for you here. Understanding IULs, um, understanding your client's annual statement. So it's just different things that you can utilize on your downtime to kind of bring yourself up to speed, so to speak. You come over here and you click on webinar calendar. So again, you're always gonna hover over the training and product tab. Click on the webinar calendar. It'll show you a list of all the upcoming events, all the upcoming webinars that, that National Life Group is hosting as a company. Here's one right here, basic life product training. So you could go ahead and you could literally click on here and then you could register in advance for this webinar basic illustration training, which is kind of like what I'm gonna do for you here today. Uh, but so we'll have it saved in our group, but this is something that you can all go ahead and click on, and that'll show you exactly how to run different types of illustrations, um, understanding IULs, but that's in Mandarin, understanding IUL credit strategies. And so again, on your downtime, great way for you to be able to get some training on your own. Uh, if you came over here just real quick and you went to families and individuals and you click tax-free retirement, it has all the flyers, all the brochures. We have them in multiple languages. We have them in Spanish. They have them in Chinese. Um, they have a, a prospecting uh, email and what to say and how to copy and paste that into an email. Just a lot of great, great tools for you to be able to utilize uh, here with, with the company. And so I'm going to come back here and oh, I need to do this. Let me just log back in here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run a uh, illustration. So let me come over here on your left hand side when you log in, it'll have illustrations right here. So you click illustrations. And I'm just going to walk you through how to just do a very simple illustration, maybe kind of how to play around with that a little bit and what that might look like. So today we're just gonna do a basic illustration. I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna create, let's just say Sam Smith, male. Uh, we'll keep his birth date, we'll change the birth date to make him a little bit younger, 19. 79, let's say, today's his birthday, 39 years old. Guys, where it says rate class, even if you have an extremely healthy client, 
you always want to leave it at verified standard non-tobacco. Why? Because when the application goes to the underwriting department, if there's any special instructions or anything that you want to let the underwriters know ahead of time, there'll be an area for you to put that in there. If the individual is extremely healthy, um, they're athletes, you know, they take good care of themselves, they've never smoked, they've never even taken anything but a baby aspirin, not such a bad idea to go ahead and include that in the notes, but, but keep it as verified standard non-tobacco. And the reason you want to do that is because when the underwriter writes it, they will come back to you and they will let you know that this, in, that this individual is qualified for elite or for preferred. Uh, for example, when my wife and I did our IULs on each other, uh, I, I kept it the same way, even though I know, look, I'm a triathlete, um, you know, for great health. I kept it at verified standard non-tobacco, and they changed it and gave us elite non-tobacco is how it came back. All right, so you, you'll come over here to death benefit and funding, and if, if you're doing a very uh, moderate case where you know, you're using a plan to be used specifically for, let's say, retirement focus, and they have a fixed price that they that the client wants to use in order to pay the premium every single month up here where it says where it says life insurance compliance test you can just leave these tabs directly where they are mech avoidance none um if you felt like uh you wanted to yes adjust the face amount because you felt like maybe your client may be adding more money than what they say that they're going to do then that's not such a bad idea to do that. But again, if you have a client that says, hey, listen, I'm going to do $500 a month. This is going to be towards my retirement. I'm going to do this for the next 20 years. And if anything changes, I'll call you. Then you can just leave that at none. Okay. And so uh, we're going to use this 39-year-old male, Sam Smith. And we're going to say minimum death benefit, max cash value. The reason we do that is because that keeps the initial type A level. It keeps the death benefit at level, which means that the face amount will stay level for the amount of time that you're paying into it. And you'll see when I do the illustration, how the actual face amount actually begins to change as the years move on, like after 20 or 25 years, you'll see the face amount begins to change. If you kept it at increasing, what happens then is you are now taking, oh, you're gonna have an increasing face amount that's gonna to begin to go up, which means that the cost of insurance goes up, which means that it takes away from what this plan is really meant to do, which is be a cash accumulation vehicle. And because you want it to be a cash accumulation vehicle, and it just so happens to have life insurance on the side, then you wanna go ahead and you always wanna keep it at level A, because this particular client they're not necessarily doing this plan for the life insurance. It's a bonus that there's permanent life insurance. And you'll see, based on the premiums that the client's paying in, they actually become self-insured at a period of time while the plan is in place. That's one of the beauties and benefits of this permanent life insurance policy here. You'll come down here and you'll see premium mode. You'll click monthly. And unless, of course, you have a client who wants to cut a check for the full amount up front? They're always welcome to do that. Uh, but we say, hey, listen, let's start this off at monthly. Um, if you decide that you wanna change it, you wanna pay annually, you're more than welcome to do that as well. All right, premium solve type, you just keep it here at none. We're just doing a very basic illustration. And then you're gonna click this tab right here, specify amount, and you're gonna put in how much does Sam Smith wanna contribute to his retirement? at age 39. So let's say for instance, Sam says, hey, I can do 500 a month and I wanna pay into my retirement, I'm 39, I wanna do it till age. So you'll change that M, M is for maturity, you'll change that M to an A, and let's say he's gonna pay into it to age 60, for example. And I'm gonna do this a couple different ways, so I'm gonna show you a couple different things that you can that you can get out of this. And then you'll come over here to the left-hand side. You'll see where it says Quick View. You'll click the Quick View button. And it will show you up here what Sam's initial face amount is. So for $500 a month, his initial face amount is going to be $424,171. There's his planned premium payments. This is his cash value right here. 
if you take a look, we said that he was going to pay into it till age 60. So at age 60, Sam will have towards his retirement, $222,055. Did you notice Sam's life insurance has remained the same? Actually take a look at after age 60, you'll notice that Sam stops paying into his, into his plan. And if he never took a dollar out of his cash value, and obviously if he's still alive and his beneficiaries don't need to exercise the death benefit, you'll take a look here. See how his cash continues to grow even though he stopped paying? And look how it continues to compound and grow year over year. Also, at age 68, his life insurance is now starting to grow as well. Again, self-insured individual, cash value accumulation with a simple moderate $500 a month payment that he put towards this plan, towards his retirement. I think we can all agree that, first of all, the rule of thumb is, is that most people are supposed to put anywhere from three to 6% of their income, um, take out of their income for their retirement out of their paycheck. And so I think $500 is a very moderate amount, especially if somebody makes, let's say, say somebody makes a little over six figures a year and they're only taking 3% out of their check, you know, this would be a great way to supplement that and then take another 3% and then redirect it into a plan like this. You know, that would be, you know, a great idea for somebody to do. And again, this is hypothetically speaking, saying that they never touch the money. Now, let's take a look at what happens if they start to draw an income. We'll come back here. We'll go to see where it says distribution information. And what we'll do is we're going to put in here, uh, solve for income. And we're going to say that Sam says that, Hey, listen, I'm going to work to age 65, but I only want to pay into my retirement till age 60. So we're going to say at age 65, Sam's going to begin to draw an income. All right, let's take a look back to our quick view. So same thing, life insurance is the same, cash value is accumulating, the, the plan premium is the same, but look what happened at age 65. At age 65, Sam is now going to be, see annual income up top here? Sam is now going to be earning a tax-free income of $28,518 a year for life or to live to be 120. And if you'll notice a couple things here, if you notice, we're obviously taking away from the cash value accumulation here because he's taking an income. And so you'll begin to start differently than what I showed you before. You're, you're going to be able to see the, see how the, the income is beginning to go down as he's taking out distributions. Okay. And obviously the face value, of the policy is also going down as he began to take distributions, okay? But you'll notice something interesting that starts to happen after age 98. <laughs> I know you might be thinking after age 98, who's living to be 98? Well, you know, there's a lot of people nowadays that are living well into their 90s healthy. And I would care to imagine that over the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, just with science that people will begin to live longer. But they're banking on the fact that in today's day, people are still only living on average to about age 80. So they're saying, hey, listen, if you make it to 98, although you're still taking an income, we are then going to begin to compound and regrow your cash value. And you're still taking an income. And if you notice over here to the right, your life insurance is also increasing. See that? And no, it's kind of crazy, but at age 110, you're still taking an income and now you got $1 million, $1 million in cash and you got a million dollars in life insurance. So what I want to do for you real quick is let's run a report and let's see what this actually looks like. So you click on the reports tab, you'll come over here, you'll click run reports. And let's take a look. Now this is going to be the part that you're actually going to show your client.
because this is what's going to get them excited if they're not already excited about what you've shown them just in that quick view. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to maximize this. And this is what it looks like. It looks very professional. It'll have the client's name and then your information. One of the really neat things about this is this page right here, the strategy that provides, it tells them an income tax-free death benefit, right? That 28,000, access the benefits in case of illness, tax deferred cash value growth, income options, just so many phenomenal things that this product does for an individual. I have one, my wife has one, our kids have one. This, every business owner in America should have one. Every school teacher, every police officer, every fireman, anybody who contributes to a 401k, a Roth IRA, has a 503b, they need to have a supplemental retirement like this because there's no other income out there that provides all these tax advantages as well as a life insurance policy attached. Pretty cool stuff. So take a look at the living benefits option. That's one of the other things that this program offers. It offers the chronic the critical illness, the critical injury. This is assuming that at, at Sam's age 65, in the event that something like this was to occur, like God forbid, a terminal illness, a chronic illness, a critical illness, or critical injury, if it's chronic, where he, he cannot perform two out of six living activities, that's his income per month. Critical illness, by definition, heart attack, stroke, cancer, something major, and I'm gonna show you guys here in a minute. That's the lump sum amount he would receive. Critical injury, coma, burn, um, you know, just car accident that leaves you in a, in a poor state, lump sum benefit right there. So this is an addition in the event that something was to happen, living benefits. And when you scroll down, this kind of gives you a projection right here of what this all looks like, benefit if you had qualifying for those critical illnesses, for those benefits. It's just a little bit more of a detailed breakdown and what that might look like. And then you can always come down here, you can read this and take a look at, at what it means that gives you an explanation as to how it would pay out. And again, a lot of this is more so for the agent's reading. Uh, you don't wanna be sitting with your client and going through all this paperwork. This is something that um, will be emailed to them or sent to them in the actual policy. Once it's approved, they'll get a copy of all this. It's not something that you'd want to spend your time on with the client because then that is going to take up all of your time that you should be doing on doing the actual application. So down here, rider descriptions, it gives you all the detailed description for all the living benefits that we just spoke about and what somebody would qualify for in the event if they had one of these living benefits, okay? Again, this is something that could be pointed out that you could skim over with your client. Again, definitions, terms, narratives, things of that nature. Don't spend your time here with the client. Um, if you wanted to, this is a hypothetical by return strategy. We also have another document that we use to show kind of like a side-by-side -side comparison. Not gonna do that for you here today. It's something that we actually cover in our boot camps, but we do a side-by-side -side comparison between a 401k and an IUL, and during some of the downturn years that the economy had, and what that looked like, let's say in 2008 when there was a crash and everything went down, what it, a 401k looked like and how it got decimated, and how the IUL just came right back year over year, performing year over year. Here's the 20 year average right here. Again, things that you could point out to a client, you don't wanna overwhelm them with information. Um, it discusses the caps. For instance, the caps on this product are 12 and a half percent, which means that if the market goes to 14, your client only gets 12 and a half. So you get the upside of the market, but without the downside risk, because if the market crashes, like it did in 2008, and everybody loses their shirt, well, this is guaranteed never to go what we define as a floor ceiling of 2.50, which quite frankly is better than what most CDs and most financial institutions are offering. So that's your guaranteed minimum that you'll make in the event of a crash. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up here. 
Uh, what page is this? This is page 19 of 29. So we want to start uh, age 39. You're going to use this side of, sorry, this side of the illustration. The current illustrated rate is what you're going to go by. And you'll take a look here and you'll see there's your cash surrender value. There's your death benefits. Kind of like what we were looking at in the quick view. There's your annualized premium. So from age 39 to age 48, your client, Sam, would have paid 60000 into his plan. Let's scroll down. Let's get to the fun part. I want to take a look at this because this tells the story. We started at age 39, paying into our retirement. And we stopped paying into our retirement at age 60, which means that we total put in $132,000 into Sam's retirement fund. At, at retirement, he put 132,000 in. At retirement, the day he stopped paying, put 132 in, he's got 222,000 in there in cash value and $424,000 in life insurance and all of his living benefits. Here's what's cool about this. Remember, we put the income in there as well for this one. 28518 for life. Well, guess what? During Sam's first four years of taking income, he would have taken $114,000 in income in his first four years, tax-free. Still has cash in there. So let's say, for instance, he takes $28,000 out that year, but he says, you know what? I need another, I need another fifteen grand. I want to go on a trip for two weeks and take the wife somewhere. Well, he can just go right into here where he's operating like his own bank, call up LSW, and they'll cut him a check that week for $15,000. it will come out of the cash value, but it doesn't affect him. It doesn't hurt him. And so scroll down. See, this never changes. That number never changes what he initially put into his investment of his retirement. Now, at age 78, he would have taken out close to $400,000 in income. And he still has $155,000 in cash in there if he just wants some extra money every, you know, that year. This is the power of an IUL, guys. This is the beauty of it. Take a look. At age 100, excuse me, at age 98, he'll have taken almost a million dollars in income. And he still has over six figures in cash value. It's such an amazing plan. Pretty crazy, huh? And let's just have some fun real quick. If he lives to be 120, he'll have taken out $1.5 million in income tax-free. Or he can go for the big money and he can pull close to $4 million out of his cash at age 120. Again, this is just for, for fun, but hey, listen, never say never. We, know, we don't know what the future holds. So this is just kind of like a very brief overview as to what it looks like. Let's go back. Let's do death benefit and funding. And I'm going to run one more. I'm going to do one more for you here where I am going to change the client information. We're going to do Sam Smith, but we're going to do a young Sam Smith because we are going to do a college plan. So let's say Sam was born in 2016. He's two years old. So I want to make it 2017. I'm going to do one year old. Now, when you're doing a college plan, when you're doing an IUL for a juvenile, for an individual younger than age 18, the owner of the policy, who is normally the parent or grandparent, has to have twice the amount of life insurance. So we'll say dad's the owner, Bob Smith. Okay, just for the sake of taking a look. Go back to death benefit and funding. Now, let's think about this for a minute, right? We've got, we've got about 17 years to fund this college fund for Sam, yes? So mech avoidance, this all stays the same. We're gonna keep everything the same, specify amount. We're gonna do from age one to age 
we're going to say to age 17. And then we're going to stop. But here, where we're going to do an income, we're going to say that from age 18, so that's A, 18, from age 18 to age, we'll say 21, we're going to draw money out for college. Let's see what that looks like for Sam. Let's see what this would, this $500 a month from dad, let's see what this pays for for college. Mommy. She's upstairs, bud. Mommy. Hey, Mommy. Okay. So let's take a look. He starts off with an initial face value of 1.9 million. See here, these zeros right here? This is for the cost of insurance. These are the fees involved in an IUL for a little Sam Smith at one years old. Now what happens is, after that fourth year, no more fees. Now it's not like this for all, like the, the first one we ran for Sam at 39 years old, if you noticed, there was just one zero there. And then in the second year, cash value. So the cost of insurance and the fees were all gobbled up in the first year. See, unlike a lot of, um, like what financial planners do is, they have fees that are built into their, their products and those fees either hit monthly, quarterly, or annually, year over year, month over month, quarter after quarter. Here, we don't have those types of fees. Ours are all built into either the first year or two, or for a young child like a one-year-old, where we're max funding in a college plan, it's gonna be in the first four years, and then those fees go away, and then it's pure cash from that point on. And so, if you take a look, same thing, we did $500 a month till Sam turned age 17. Now, if you look at age 18, he can have $34,119 every year tax-free for college. Now, look, in the grand scheme of things, I'm sure that in 17 years from now with the cost of inflation, college is probably going to be a lot more, even in-state, than $34,000. But maybe this can go for a dorm or books, or I think we all just kind of get what, what we're doing here is you probably have to put in double the amount in order to put a dent into the cost of college annually. And so, if you take a look, after though, age 21, and again, this doesn't have to be repaid back, and he still has the life insurance over here. This, Sam, this young Sam Smith, he is a self-insured individual his entire life. He'll never have to buy life insurance unless he wants more of it. But he's always gonna have over a million dollars in life insurance permanent coverage, and living benefits. But watch what happens. After we took out all the cash for college, at age 22, Sam's left with uh, 1265 in cash. Now, Sam's dad never makes another payment into this plan. Watch what happens over the course of his lifetime. When he turns 60, he will have 700 and, nope, sorry, right here, 60. He will have $877,000 in tax-free cash sitting in there as his own bank at age 60. And he's got $1.6 million in life insurance. And it just grows and grows and grows if he doesn't touch it. Who knows what Sam might become? He might become an entrepreneur himself, become a business owner, have multiple streams of income, and he never even really needed the IUL, and it just sat somewhere and built and built and built. And when he turns 80, he's like, oh, $5.4 million in income. Why don't we just go ahead and just take that and invest that into something? As an example, these are the options that you have with this program. How cool is that, right? So, and again, you can do the reports, you pull it up, It'll show you everything that I just showed you here before. In the reports, it'll show you the income that he received, um, what it looks like, how much income he gets for life. You know, let's actually go back and let's just do something just a little bit different. So we did solve for income, right, there. And then let's do an additional, like just, just for the sake of just 
let's add a row and we're going to specify amount and let's say that Sam wants to pick this up at age 30. At age 30, he says, you know what? I know I've got this IUL plan. I'm working in a job. I've got a 401k. My dad always told me about this thing he put away. It helped me pay for part of my college. I'm gonna pay for this and I'm gonna use it as another supplemental retirement. But then what I'd also like to do, wait, let's just take a look here. So he pays maybe, and then he starts to pay again, and at age 61, instead of having $877,000, in tax-free income, he has $1.5 million. Okay, is everybody with me here? Right before, Sam's dad stopped paying at age 17, right? That was his last payment. Well, we took the income for college. He graduates at age 22, finds his way in his 20s, gets himself a good job, and decides that I wanna start to contribute towards my retirement that my dad set up that the plan that I still have in place. Look, and then he just explodes so that at age 60, he can retire. Guess what? At age 50, if he wanted to, he could take that money and do something nice with it and maybe invest it in, into different uh, things and maybe retire at an early age and go into a different career. Who knows? Options. This is what we're talking about here is options. Very cool, very cool, very cool. So. Just something that I wanted to kind of put into, a, into effect here for you guys. I will save this. We're going to add it to the, uh, hopefully add it to the Facebook group so you'll have access to it so you understand exactly how to kind of mess around with this and go in and you can kind of, you know, uh, practice with this before you go see your client. It's a phenomenal way to kind of get your feet under you and get an understanding as to run it, how to run an illustration. Remember, you can sign up for uh, the illustration trainings. There's all the flyers, all the tools, all the resources, everything you need in the LSW back office. Guys, I wish everybody a very successful 2018.